Okay, so she said, I'm 56 years old and trying to find out my next move. I do have about 15 years of administrative experience, but not sure I want to go back into the office. Who the f would want to go back into the office when you've been out? I exploring know. the country Basically being your own boss getting into different restaurants and and and, and excursions like who really wants to go back into the office yeah. but um so 56 years old she ready to do something different uh what would you do if you was in her shoes um if it was me i would what is up y'all how y'all doing what's up what's up if you are new to us my name is nick rochelle and i am carla rochelle and we are a married couple welcome to our channel <laughs> where we are living life for a living enjoying ourselves y'all see we are home yes. for christmas break I thought it was my birthday break. No, I'm just playing. It's for Carla's Christmas birthday break. break. No, it's, for, it's for Christmas, yeah. <laughs> yes, and uh, first and foremost, shout out to our sponsor, Highfield Trucking. We're going to be speaking about them a little bit uh, later in the show. Um, but uh, this is a fleet of 40-foot straight trucks, y'all. These are not any ordinary trucks. All you need is your Class B CDL. In your truck, you're most likely going to have a sink, space for a toilet, a full-size bed. You got cute little cabinets. And you just travel all over the USA and you make money. Yep, you can decorate it however you want to. You want to put you some lead lights in there? Yeah. Get spontaneous? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can definitely get spontaneous. <laughs> now, we don't have a, a few people that's reached out to us. They're letting us know, like, hey, Nick and Carla, I want to just thank you for putting the word out there about Highfield. Yes. We have, in fact, joined Highfield, and this is how it's been going for us, because mm -hmm. you've been wanting them to, you've been wanting them to tell you, right? Yes, and I, I also want to know, like, if you all are using us, as yep. a reference um that's what i was supposed to come back and ask some of you all so i just want to know we want to try to um keep up with the people that are using us as a reference because as nick mentioned the last time um we want to start trying to do something for you all like a giveaway or some shit yeah. like that yeah uh, some some yeah and so like carla <laughs> said earlier uh, it is her birthday weekend as a matter of fact tomorrow is your birthday so if you're tomorrow watching this right is now my birthday y'all you ain't even been doing it's my birthday week it's my birthday i told week. you i don't know why but <laughs> if you're watching this right now then that most likely you're watching it if you're watching it the day it drops it is carla's birthday if so it's the 17th yes december Satch in the building so do us a favor go on Satch nation i feel like we need our own little ski we we, we need our own sound or something you wish you had an aka to make you scream and holler they want some ski week ski week Y'all yeah, ain't no AKAs. Because, because, like, the thing is, y'all know, like, it's like, if it wasn't for the Sagittarius, we don't know where the other Zodiac signs would be. That's why oh, they had to goodness. put us so in be doing, I was just about to. <laughs> so, first and foremost, if y'all if y'all are watching this, go ahead and wish Carla happy birthday in the comment <laughs> section. Um, most likely, we are packing our clothes because you're not packed yet. I'm not either. No. Getting ready to go on a trip so Carla can be somewhere warm for her birthday near yeah. some water. I was about to say, you know, y'all pretty cool, but it's like Wait, what do you what do you mean, y'all? So, I'm, so I'm not understanding the tone that's coming out your throat. So box. I've been noticing there's been a lot of Sagittarian birthdays, a lot of Sagittarius say like Nicki Minaj, uh Kai Sinat, and um Nicki Minaj, you know, she was just recently on. If y'all don't know Kai Sinat, he's this huge streamer from New York. He's done did a lot of stuff, caused a little trouble. You know, he make one post and the whole little young kids in New York coming out. <laughs> but uh, Nicki Minaj, he's only 22. He just turned 22, as a matter of fact. Oh, wow. Okay. And, you know, Nicki Minaj, she's used to them saying that she's bitter and jealous of the youth and all this. So she's trying to, like, show people, like, look, I'm not jealous of the youth, you know? So she, she really trying to show that? Like, you know something, like, I'm, like, I know a lot of sad just get a bad rep, right? Y'all be doing too much, some of y'all. One thing read. about me, when your ass ain't doing something right, I'm going to say you ain't doing something right. Now, I'm just trying to see, is she really trying to rock with the young people, or is she just trying to keep a buzz around her name? Because, you know, could be some both. of these You could kill uh, multiple birds with one stone. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, what, okay. so she recently went on his, uh, his uh, channel, his streaming platform, and, you know, she's, 
shaking her rump, you know, just showing her little body off. When I tell you comments, the comment section eating her up. They just, they age shaming. They like, bitch, you too, you too um, old to be doing all this. How old is Nicki Minaj? She in her 40s. Oh, well, okay. And what else? But they're just saying that she's too old to be doing what she's doing. And me personally, she don't look forward to me. Well, my <laughs> thing is, I feel like you only as old as you feel. And look. <laughs> we ain't looking at that. No, because you might look old and you might feel young. So <laughs> and you might feel like a Thundercat. So <laughs> you give Thundercat energy. But I don't see anything wrong with it. I'll never forget it was one time. I know I was in my 20s. And um, I went to visit one of my friends in Atlanta trying to celebrate my birthday. And we went to this, it was like a little bar, like a little lounge area. And it was this lady in there and she was celebrating her birthday. And I actually looked at her. I said, that's how I want to be when I turn 47. Because when I tell you she had the whole lounge lit. I want to say it was around that time um, Sierra came out, her little goody son. Uh, ooh, and yeah. she kind of had on her cute little outfit. Yeah. And, y'all, she did that little back bend, you know, that back bend that Sierra do. Right. Baby, did it and came on back up. Speaking of the sad, it's another sad, Chef Babette. She had her birthday, too. Uh-huh. And um, she's 70 some years old. Oh, she, she don't look good. it. She don't look at this on the screen. Let me know. Do this woman look 70 some years old? Absolutely not. So yeah. I, that's why I say I don't see anything wrong with it. It's like you only live once. Have fun while you're here. And just think back in the day when just, you was 40, just you was no a grandma. Back, just, in the, back in the day when you were 40s and your 40s, you were a grandma. You were dressing like a grandma. You were looking crazy. You what know? you talking about? Back you back, in, back the day, in the day, like in the fifties and stuff like that. I think when you was forty, you probably was a grandma. Like you probably was moving around. Like I don't know. I think kind of, I depends. don't know. I went there. It just depends on how well you take care of yourself. That's yes. what I think. That's like I said. Just don't do no drugs. You know, you have some people they do drugs. They look like didn't even happen to them. You have some people, they do drugs. They look like. They take their damn bottom chin out. And it look like they done did life for them and everybody else. So I just yeah. say you have to make some good decisions But she yourself. can be, she can be petted, little Nicki Minaj. Because, oh, yeah, she definitely petted. petted. You know, Cardi B, her rival, she's going through something right now with her her, her boyfriend, husband, whatever they he is, offset. They going through a divorce, a separation. Oh, so her husband. Yeah. And Nicki, she being petty about it, you know, rubbing, rubbing her face into it. So. Yeah, you know, they never kind of liked each other. But I don't think it's right that she doing that. Especially, like, when it's, like, a relationship, a marriage gone bad. Because, like, Lovely T said, that's like celebrating, that's like a death. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like a funeral. It's like you're already going through something. And the fact that she's in the public eye going through it, it's not right to put salt on the wound. So and plus, don't she don't know what her little, uh, her little dude going to do. Ken Petty. She don't know how he going to turn out, honey. She really don't. But anyway, so you guys, just to kind of catch you up on our journey in the truck, um, we... Um, Y'all know we were in Las Vegas. As a matter of fact, the last time we saw y'all, we were in Las Vegas. We were like, oh, no. You know, we were trying not to get stuck over here. Because, you, you know, sometimes you get those loads booked and they can cancel on you. Yeah. But um, we got the load to Utah. We drove uh, across 80. Um, we did run into a little snow. when we, we just so happened when we picked up our load, we saw our mentor our mentors, our previous mentors, they're not, not our mentors anymore, I guess. You oh, know? yeah, we graduated. Yeah, we graduated. <laughs> but they were just like, y'all, did y'all see the map? Did y'all see the app? Still look. Like I told y'all, they always be looking out. Look, they still looking out, even though we graduated. Even gave me an apple. Lucy, uh, if y'all haven't tried the Lucy Glow apples, check them out. I mean, maybe some <laughs> GMO action going on, but they real good. They like yellow on the outside red on the inside but they were just like have y'all seen the map just pay attention because it was a big snowstorm just kind of coming through so when i uh and the app that we use personally is the weather channel app that's the one i look because it lets you look at the radar it let you see kind of what the weather's doing and i could see the snow moving in so i was like okay i'm just gonna drive I'm not going to stop. I'm going to just go and get through it. So we ran into a little snow. Yeah. But it wasn't bad or whatever. Yeah, I think the snow actually, um, when we was 
picking up the load. Nick was like, they need to come on because Nick was looking at it on the um on the weather app. And actually, the snow kind of end up being behind us, like mm-hmm. the big the big snow <laughs> that was coming. And so yeah, we drove through a little snow. It wasn't yeah. too bad, but it was cool because you know I got an opportunity to use my big winter coat. Y'all know I've been wanting to use my big winter coat. No, I, I mean it was really a great opportunity. I got to put my hood on. I ain't have to feel stupid with it on. You know, I just really enjoyed my little self. You look nice and in you your coat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I told Nick yeah. she was out there all warm at the pump. I saw some people looking at her. I said, honey, they need to get them a coat because right. they looking cold out right. there, trying to hurry up and run across. <laughs> right <laughs> but um so i guess this uh what we wanted to kind of bring up in this video um because like i said we have had a few people reach out to us and um we wanted to just kind of go over a few things uh the main i guess focus is like if you were to leave trucking what would you do like if you were to leave even if you were to leave your career i guess right now whatever you're doing like what would you do and i think what sparked this um this conversation was this comment that we received from Angela uh, 6905, Angela M 6905. Um, and pretty much she said, uh, I love you guys vibe. Keep the videos coming. I'm older, but you guys teach me some things sometimes. So now I'm thinking of leaving trucking. I run regional and I don't like the long runs. I live in Southern California, which you know what? We've actually taken loads like, okay, if we're chilling in California, like in near Los Angeles, San Diego, something like that, there's this load that'll come out where it says, hey, can you go all the way to the top of the map in Washington and then get dump that and then get it and then bring it, bring it back down to Southern California. Yeah. It seemed like, oh, that's just like a cute little load. That load is long. Yeah, and that traffic. And not to oh. mention if it's during winter, because, you know, when you're on that side and you're going straight up, you, you're you going to experience all the weather types, mm-hmm. snow, rain, sleet, all that Seems stuff. Seems like all four seasons. <laughs> yeah. So I get, I get that feeling long. But she said, and I have tried to find something local, but it's either heavy lifting or fighting traffic all day going down the ports of Los Angeles. Not down with that either. And I don't blame her. Man, why does it seem like all the local jobs, like if we wanted to stay local right now and use our CDL, we're going to be working like a Hebrew slave. I know. It seemed like a lot of people that work local, they have a lot of strenuous work. Like they have to unload the truck or something mm-hmm. like that. Because we used to watch Keeping It 100 when she was doing her little local loads. Yeah. Just watching her do all that work, I'd be like, oh, no. Yeah, like it was one guy, uh, I can't remember where we were, <laughs> where we were, but – um. His truck, all of his stuff had fell over in his truck. So it was like, you know how sometimes they put stuff on pallets and then like they would shrink wrap it, but I guess it wasn't tight enough. So the stuff had jumped off the pallet and it had fell over. And he was in there having to pick the stuff up, trying to pick the stuff up. And then they gave him, um, what is it? The um, pallet jack. jack so that he can like try to pull it out. And he was doing it by himself. They were just watching him, the people who he was delivering to. And all his stuff had fell over. I was like, man. It's it's crazy like sometimes i don't feel guilty at all for how easy our work is me either. but i don't think y'all realize like how easy this work is that we do of course <laughs> you have to drive but again like when they load us if y'all can see the pay on some of these loads which we don't disclose that information when we pick up the load nine times out of ten how many pallets do we get one or two exactly <laughs> <laughs> it just be one or two pallets. So, and we are most. I remember one time. Remember that one time? It was just a box. The person handed it to yes, you. Yes, <laughs> my first load there. He was like, "Oh, here's the load right here." I was like, "Oh, okay." I picked it up and put it in there and tried to like figure out how to strap it down so it wouldn't bounce all over the place. But and it'd be thousands of dollars for yeah. these loads. So, um, it's just man. And then nine times out of ten, when we go and pick up, we're backing into a dock. And they're pulling the load off. Mm-hmm. But every blue moon now, you will run into a situation where, let's say, you if you take, like, a art load or you're going down New York, New York, Manhattan, some stuff like that, where you're downtown in the middle, then you do have to unload the truck with your lift gate 
But a lot of times, again, it's just like one pallet, two pallets, stuff like that. Yeah, it just depends because sometimes they do have little loads that be like teamwork. Yeah, but that's why <laughs> that's why you look at what comes through at and the notes, yeah, and how much is paying, and we just like, okay, is this something we think we want to deal with? You know something, and one thing that our mentors actually taught us was. You know, you want to make sure, like, when you get that load, that that's something that you're comfortable with. Yeah. You know, as far as the pay, so you don't have to come out griping about it. Yep, he always, he, uh, Tim, he would always say, like, just make sure whatever you get paid for that load, you're okay with what you're getting paid so you don't feel like crap when you're doing the work. Yeah. So we always make sure that whatever we take, that we cool with the pay. Yeah. So, um... Okay, so she said, I'm 56 years old and trying to find out my next move. I do have about 15 years of administrative experience, but not sure I want to go back into the office. Who the f- will want to go back into the office when you've been out I exploring know. the country? Basically being your own boss. Getting into different restaurants and, 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 and excursions. Like, who really wants to go back into the office? But um, some people do, but when you... Me, I didn't. Mm, I wouldn't either. Any suggestions? Sorry, this is a long, this is so long, but like I said, I don't comment often and wanted to give you guys your props. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. You know, we just live in our life and happy that we can share and inspire just by sharing, you know, how we choose to do things in this life. Yeah. But, um, so 56 years old, she ready to do something different. Uh, what would you do if you was in her shoes? Um, if it was me, I would, um, well, I would try to have some savings. Like, um, just say for instance, even if you don't have savings now, if you do have savings, good. Even if you don't have savings now, I would say try to bust your butt, go ahead and try to get you up some type of savings so that you don't have to feel rushed into making a decision. And then I would also say, just think about um, whatever it is that you're passionate about and see if you can try to get financial gain from that, um, whether it be you coming up with something yourself or whether it be your passion can be used to help somebody else. So that's what I would say. And that's if you don't want to go back into the office because I personally wouldn't want to go back. Okay. I get what you're saying. Now I remember when, um, okay. So I was thinking along those same lines when you said like find something you're passionate about and see if you can make money from it. Yeah. So I guess, cause I kind of wrote down what I would do if I was in those shoes. So first and foremost, um, I would minimize if I know that there's a chance that I might be getting ready to take some sort of leap of faith or do something different. I would, like you said, save money, but I will also minimize all of my living expenses. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like try to get it down to where you're not really paying much. Like remember when me and Carla took our leap of faith to get our, uh, the other stuff started, we, um, we moved into our RV full time. We yeah. already had it paid off. We actually had got rid of the house. Remember, yeah, we got rid of like all unnecessary bills, so yep. that was really we just had like stuff like cell phone and even our um. So again, we bought we bought our RV um before we were even truck drivers. We yeah. bought that with cash, but so we didn't have any like notes on that. But whenever we would stay at like a park, rent was only like three hundred and some a month. That's almost like staying with your parents and, and having to pay. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like their utility bill or they, you know, because some of them still have phone phones, they little phone bill. Yeah, but um, bill. but okay, so she's fifty six, so she's kind of like okay. Um, so again, you don't have to move into like an RV like we did. Nothing extreme like that. You fifty six, so you probably want to still be comfortable or whatever. But um. Another thing I would do is I would really just pace myself, take my time and try to look at ways to make money online or from home. Yeah. There are so many ways to make money from home. Like this social media stuff that me and Carla do, it brings in good money. Like if we wanted to live off it full time, we could, but we're at a point now, like we had almost made six figures on social media alone last year, mm-hmm. but it's like, I guess we have, do we have expensive taste? It's like, what? it's like it was tight. Even though we made a good amount last year, mm-hmm. it still was tight. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Like I didn't feel like I could move like like how we getting ready to go out of go out of town for your birthday and how we went to Japan and how we it's like we couldn't really do all that. I think we was just wanting more. I think that's what yeah. it was. And then not only that, yeah, we was starting to splurge a little bit more. Yeah. So I think that's what happens. Um <laughs> when you get to a point where you are kind of just living how you want to live mm. and you're not having to think about, oh, this costs this much. You just kind of go in there and you get what you want. You don't yeah. have you don't be looking at prices. It get to a point you be like, but how much oh. that juicer cost that we just got? How much that the juicer cost? Why are you talking because about Because it's like hella expensive. That little, that little juice is not that much. Don't say it out loud, then you gonna hear that say it. Somebody here, well, for be me, like, for me, the juicer wasn't that much. But that's and what that's I'm saying. That's why I was able to get the juicer. Cause to me, I didn't look at the juicer as being that much. Now maybe if I would have looked at the juicer and be like, whoa, <laughs> I can't I afford bet, that. Look, I bet I if we bet was the just universe would have been like, you right, you can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go and just take some more of your little dollars. <laughs> you can't afford it. But yeah, so so the point is, there's so many different ways to make money online, and this is not a young person's game. If you really pay attention, there are people of all ages making good money online. I'm seeing again, Chef Babette. That's one of them. She in her 70s. She's making her money at her restaurant that she own, which we got to check that out when we go to Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, but she's also making her money doing her social media stuff. But it's just you don't even have to be a social media uh, influencer to make money online there's just so many different ways so i would just kind of pace myself and look at ways that i can at least be some sort of like entrepreneur or independent contractor because me personally once i have tasted this type of freedom i just i just couldn't imagine going back to somebody telling me what to do like i almost thought about going to school to get a degree um for something (laughs) but when i saw where that degree would take me It's mainly me being under someone and them telling me what to do. Even if I were to work my way up and get like six figures, they own me and they really going to be able to tell me what to do for that six figure job. So I was like, ugh, but that's just also showing you that even though we're in the truck, we got the social media stuff going, we are still me and Carla just trying to figure out ways to make money. So if we wanted to stop trucking, like we could still maintain this amount of money that now we're making. Mm -hmm. Uh, We got some we're working on right now where we're getting people to sign NDAs just to talk about it. So it's like, we're just constantly just trying to figure out ways to make money online. So that's what I would do personally. Yeah. And I'm not sure exactly what you do um, as far as administration wise, Again, you may be able to help somebody else. Like, I just got finished reaching out to my sister a little while ago and was like, hey, you know, you ever thought about doing this, trying to see if she can help me and Nick out? Because she does administrative and she has business management. So it's like sometimes it can be other avenues you can go down and not necessarily have to just go in the office. You have people out here that's on social media that need somebody to help them or give them some type of direction. You may have somebody local in your area that needs some type of help, some type of assistance. Yeah, I think like a lot of older people, especially like when they think of social media, they think like, oh no, that's that's a young person's game. I don't that's that's play play. But it's like when you see how many millionaires there are online making their money like online in the digital world, the metaverse, however you wherever you want to refer to it, like then you realize, OK, you don't want to let this opportunity pass you up, you know. Mm-hmm. So I definitely think you should just maybe try to find some ways to make money online. I make me think about how I'm paying this girl, this college student just to simply schedule my stuff. I'm about, probably about to pay her to do something else too that I'm tired of doing. But it's like a lot of, when you have work that you're doing and you're tired of doing it, like especially like us or social media influencers, we'll pay people to like do that shit because it's just tedious or something. Yeah. So if she do administrative, she could be what, like a, a virtual assistant or something. Yeah. People pay good money for virtual assistants. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But, um, yeah that's what i would recommend and then i know we had another email babe uh because i know you was asking people to reach out this person said carla asked on the podcast for people to let you know what they are doing 
Well, thanks to you, we started at Highfield on the 28th of November. Congratulations. Congratulations. They said we were at Prime for almost 24 years. And in September, we quit. Good Dang, for you. Prime? I didn't even know people was at Prime for that long. They 24 doing that, years? They doing Prime time. I couldn't imagine running like a machine for 24 years. I wonder if they did both. I wonder if um I wonder if they did both company and then if they did own an operator. You, you know they say owner operator, you just a glorified company driver. I anyway. thought you was gonna say something else because baby, even when them uh owner operators or whatever, they still had to take about every load. They'll be acting they like did. I know my trainer, he'll be acting like he'll be like, looking like, Let me see if there's something I wanna take. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Look, yeah, this I guess I'll take it. I like to no, you got to take that load. Look, y'all, and the reason Nick and I know is because I, the person who I rode with, she was a company driver, and Nick actually rode with an owner-operator. So when stuff used to happen, I used to be comparing it with Nick, and I used to be like, what's the point? Because y'all yeah. doing the same thing we do. When they taking a gazillion dollars out of your check every week, you going to take that load. And that, that makes you vulnerable. Like if you don't take the load, they can punish you. They can be like, oh, okay, you don't want to, you didn't want to take this load for me. Oh, yeah. And I know you got fifteen, sixteen, two thousand dollars coming out your check every week. I'm going to heard of that. I'm going to yeah. make sure you don't get no loads to cover your week and your yeah. check going to be negative. Mm -hmm. So anyways, they said, since retirement isn't for us, yet we were um, looking at different companies. When I ran across one of your videos on YouTube, I was intrigued to learn more. So I watched all the videos I could find. Then I called Kayla. I didn't realize how jaded and cynical I had become working for Prime. I now feel so enthusiastic about my job again. We are in this truck. They gave a number. If you see us, uh, knock on the door and say hello. I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to do your videos. Your videos change my life's direction. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stay safe and hope to see you out here. Wow. See, I love to hear... Um you know, I love to hear when people tell us, you know, their story, kind of how we help them to think about stuff differently yeah. or a different direction to go in. Because, y'all, I'm telling y'all, this, you know. This I just wonder. Work, this will work easy. Yeah, and I feel like when you come <laughs> from, like, Tractor Trailer, it allows you to appreciate this world more. Oh, I wonder the burden that was lifted off of them when they got into the little truck or whatever, especially when they go, well, they've been driving 24 years. They probably was driving them like a Cadillac. <laughs> <laughs> but um i mean you know congratulations good for y'all man I'm, yeah I'm i think i you. saw somebody else they were but i think they said they was in like a box truck and they were saying that it was so easy in comparison to when they were driving 18 wheelers hmm. well <laughs> Uh, okay. And I guess I'll leave y'all with this. This is a little quote I found online. This guy, he said, and let me know how you feel about it. He said, okay. $3,000 a month in your business puts you over the median income in the U.S. That's a big freaking deal. He said, $5,000 a month puts you almost at the median household income in the U.S. That's massive. 5000 a month for most people would allow them to work full time in their business and live a pretty damn good life. It's not always about making $20,000 plus a month. Focus on going full time first, then scale up. And um, I think that's what do you think. I think uh, it almost made me think about like the advice that we kind of gave, yep. you know, when because we all have you know, things that we unnecessarily spend money on. Yeah. And I think if you can just have awareness of what it is that you're doing, not only it will allow you to save if you stop doing those things, but then it can, it can actually help put you in a different, you know, like income bracket. Yeah. But like, so if you are the type, like how we said, if you're in a career and you kind of want to switch it or try something different, just like not even for just being in trucking, um, just figure out maybe something you can like a hobby or something that you could start a side hustle. That's what I meant. Like a side hustle, try to get it to a certain point where you can maybe quit and then focus on the full time and then scale up. Mm hmm. I would say that's what we did, but it ain't. We actually, when we took our leap of faith, 
we just kind of we were pulling from our savings until the money got to a point where it was taking care of us yeah but i feel like we still planned ahead of time to even have a yeah savings. even how we minimize all of our uh monthly expenses and stuff mm-hmm. and we moved into our rv yeah yeah but anyways uh i want to thank y'all so much for tuning in and uh i guess we'll catch y'all next time peace, peace. you don't really need a lot of money because you know what it is you know what it should be Never needed their approval, don't be validated. You live it in your truth, only when you feel it, that's why I'm tuning into your body.